This is the second game in a series where it focuses more on the 2D platforming instead of the 3D platforming the original had. I found myself enjoying this game like I did with Donkey Kong Country. Ukulele and the Impossible Lair pays respect to that formula that was a great way to deliver fun in a fresh new aspect. The previous ukulele focused on that third-person aspect akin to the games like Banjo-Kazooie. The history of the game company is that Platonic Games paid homage to Banjo-Kazooie in that first game and made it successful with a Kickstarter to, well, kickstart that game. The game obviously did pretty well, well, well enough to make a second game which we're focusing on now. Let's check out my review of this colorful game. You start off with a pretty over-the-top tutorial which has a foreshadowing of Impossible Lair you will end up enjoying later in the game. Oh, did I say enjoy? <laughs> well, you shall see. You're pushed through the tutorial to a fight with the boss that if you have enough skill and want to risk trying a no-hit run, you could essentially beat the game upon starting it. Yep you start in the final level. However, if you're like me, and know you're not the best platformer around or a speedrunner, you'll find yourself losing that tutorial level to start the game. Although you fell and continue through the overworld, you find yourself knowing and wondering what will happen as that final level is always there, looming over you. You can come back at any time in the game to try your luck at it again, but it's better to try and capture bees to give yourself a chance at beating that final level. Ukulele is a fast-paced game. There are most often two versions of a level for each level you may play. For example, you may have a dry clean run through, then a water level after completing a certain task. The environments in the levels and the overworld is bright and colorful, almost luring you into thinking the game is great without any issues, while that dark, foreboding, impossible level sits back and watches you play each level till you're ready to try again. You can up your survivability by finding the 48 bees throughout the map. Each mission you complete will have one bee at the end, and like I said, each mission may have two different levels you may play. Plus, there are random bees throughout the map that are hidden until you open a new area. In the overworld, it sticks with the original design the first game had. You can explore, interact with characters, and find hidden power-ups. What this does is instead of a chapter select on each start screen, it gives you a way to be immersed into the game as the overworld is where you will find each level mission to explore. In the levels, the game itself explodes with color as every level has details that capture your attention as you race through them. Thankfully, this game doesn't have the same issues with the clunky design the first had. The overworld is just a part to explore and find new levels instead of making it the main game. It's fun to find pages that will change the environment to open new areas or use Trousers Paywall to open new areas with coins you have earned. Twit coins are located in every level and sometimes pretty hard to get to. Each level has five and will unlock as more areas are opened. This gives you the chance if you miss a few coins to go back, replay some levels and focus on finding those coins. Tonics can also be found in the environment that help to change the environment to give it a new feel. I'll explain more later what tonics are, but for now you can see there are options to give the design a noir feel or maybe a weird feel as you see here. The music is pretty great as you find yourself lost in it and the goofy sounds of Yuka and Laylee as they roll or crash through boxes can give you a laugh. I have to say that when Laylee is escaping and you're trying to capture him, that sound does remind me of a Dumb and Dumber where they yell, the most annoying sound in the world. Yeah, you remember that? Don't believe me? Listen. Yep, now imagine that over and over again. Besides those, the environment for me is fresh and fun as you explore new areas and new levels to play. Moving on to the story. Wait, what story? The story for this game is there to just push you to the next level or to get more coins. The story for me was ultimately forgettable. I enjoyed the start of the story with the witty banner between characters, but really this is where the game is lacking. You can find random characters throughout the map to give you some funny one-liners, but in regards to a detailed and engaging story, unfortunately, there really isn't one. Gameplay, for me, is the most enjoyable aspect of the game. While the environment is beautiful, the story is a bit lacking, but that is made up for with the gameplay. The game is so much like Donkey Kong Country in that speeding through a level platforming and dodging enemies with the reward of capturing a bee. You control Yuka and Lele as one character. They may look goofy together, but their friendship is reliable in the mission. 
As oftentimes, without Lely there to keep you aloft with those bat wings, you may find certain parts harder. You start out with both characters till you get hit, and then Lely panics and flies away, which I find myself being annoyed at more than just him leaving, as there is an option for you to jump, dash, or grab at Lely to capture him before he flies away. If you aren't so lucky, you can find little bells throughout the level that will return Lely for you. Tonics also help with your abilities in the game. You can apply tonics that will make Lely stick around longer, or make Yuka more durable. Tonics do help a lot when trying to make it through the levels, but beware as some tonics that help you also cut into your cost for getting quills at the end of each level. While it's useful to have those tonics, it isn't always going to help. I find that as you progress and capture more bees for your bee shield, it's always good to go and test how far you can make it on that impossible layer. I personally greatly enjoyed the puns that the characters threw out at you or the general levels that you play. It's that last level that really soured my taste on the game overall. More so that it's a level you can't just have as an optional level, but that it's a mandatory level you have to beat in order to beat the game. While I understand that the game is ukulele and the impossible lair, so it does center around it, I think the game would have been better suited if the impossible lair was a side level, not a main level to beat. Like the Path of Pain in Hollow Knight. It's an enjoyable experience when you finally beat that area, but it isn't what the whole game is centered about. Because of that, and several other issues, like a lack of story, I give the game a 7 out of 10. The gameplay on the main levels is actually quite enjoyable, and it's really just that end level that really, really grinds my gears. For the average gamer who may enjoy Donkey Kong Country and that 2D side-scrolling action, I say it's worth it if you want to buy it on sale. For those who are machinists or wanting that speedrun the game, I say get it when you can. It's a fun game till you try to beat that impossible lair. I hope you enjoyed my ukulele and the impossible lair review. If you enjoyed my video, please leave a like and a comment below on what you liked about this video, or if you have any other games you'd like me to check out. If you'd like to help support the channel, make sure to click subscribe. This is the Still Grizzly, wishing you luck with all your future games. Thank you.